Ten years ago, I was interviewing for an analyst position, and I remember sitting in the interviewer's office, the director's office, and he was asking me about all of my Excel skills because it was a really fast-paced office, so the expectation level was pretty high that you could work totally independently, no hand-holding. And as I'm going on and on and on about all these projects and all my great skills, because that's what you do in interviews, right? You, it's not the time to be humble. It's the time to really advocate for yourself. I'm like going on and on. And then the director is like, okay, prove it. You've got great Excel skills. Come on, come with me. And he led uh, me to the other office across the hall. And what was waiting for me? A nice glowing screen with an Excel test. And my heart just about stopped. And I was replaying like, oh my gosh, what did I say in the past like hour in the interview? What? Oh no. Like, what did I say I knew how to do again? I hope I can actually do those things. And I kind of panicked a little bit. Now, spoiler alert, I got the job and I'm still very good friends with that director. And since then, we've laughed about this, this idea of this Excel test. And Isaac and I thought it would make a really fun blog post and a really fun tutorial. So I'm going to try to see if 10 years later, I can still pass. This could be um, really exciting and I could be like, oh my gosh, I still got it. Or this could be really humbling, and I could realize that I've still got room to grow, which you know, you know is true for all of us. So my goal with this recording is to record it in one take all the way through, and no matter how much I get stuck or not, just keep going and try to show you what somebody, like even somebody who does this for a living and teaches on this for a living, I wanna show you that even we get stuck sometimes and like where I might know the answer right away and how I might solve it, or where I might not know the answer right away and kinda of wish I didn't record this whole thing uh, at all. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready to see this Excel test? Let's do it. All right, so on my screen, I have got the Excel test, the famous Excel test from 10 years ago. So first things first, I am going to resave this because just because it's a test doesn't mean it's time to lose your manners. Let's save this as a new file name so I'm not accidentally saving over stuff. And where should we put this? Let's put it somewhere I am sure to find it later like uh, my OneDrive folder with a million other files in it. Okay, let's stick it in there and we will call it, uh, we'll just call it AKE. What's downloading? I don't know. I already have this downloaded. It's open, dumb computer. Okay, let's save as. Here's the data. It's demographic data, fake data, but a similar structure to this NGO and what type of data we had. Here's the data, and here is the test, the questions. Now, I remember I asked Isaac, the director, the interview uh, interviewer, how long did this take the other candidates? And he was like, everybody finished in 30 minutes or less. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be sitting here for a while. So we'll see how long this recording lasts because I'm going to be talking to you as I solve things, so it might take 30 minutes, it might take 10 minutes. I don't know, we'll see. You should challenge yourself and give it a try too. You know, use your, your phone timer and see how long it takes you. This shouldn't take all day. That's what I'm trying to get across. It should be like pretty quick, even with me talking to you. Okay, so let's see what these questions are. I'll try to enlarge this and wrap this so you can actually see what it is I'm doing. So first things first, Question number one, how many total participants are included in this data set? There's a couple ways you can do this. The bad way, the better way, and the ultimate best way. Let's see if I can figure out the best way, the most efficient, correct way where you're not really likely to make typos. So, oh, first things first, my manners. I'm gonna rename this as raw. I don't want to touch this one. 
and let's move it to, we'll just put it before this one, let's copy it, call it clean because I'm probably gonna have to do some calculations and recoding in here. Is this frozen yet? No, let's freeze the top rows, view, freeze panes, top, and let's add some filters in case we need to sort or filter and bold the top row, make it actually visible. What are we dealing with? Unique IDs, address, zip, neighborhood, race, ethnicity, date of birth, number of children. Okay, okay, I can do that, right? I hope so. I hope I can do that. Let's find out. Okay, what are we looking for? Number of children. So the bad way is you'd count like this. One, two, three, four. I know you're not doing that, but as I go around the country slash world training on this, I see a lot of people kind of pointing with their fingers or, or trying not to point, just like looking at it with their eyes. So that's the bad way. We're not doing that. In big data sets, it's impossible to do it that way. The better way, this is probably how I did it 10 years ago. I probably scrolled to the bottom. Oh, wait, wait, let me show you another bad way. This is probably the default way I see a lot of people doing. If you haven't been trained on this, you wouldn't know. Like this is what most people lean towards. They highlight this whole area and they either look at the bottom and they're like, count 114, cool. Or they say, well, this started as one. So I'll scroll down and this is 115. So 115 minus one, 114. Or somewhere around here, if you kind of like hover your mouse in the right way, it'll tell you 114 rows have been selected. Eh, not the best way. Okay, that's bad. What I probably did was a count to A back in the day. This was my like, before I used pivot tables too, too regularly phase of life. I probably did a count to A and got 114. And I probably would have checked for duplicates. I hope I would have. That's another thing you gotta do. Let's color code any duplicates in red. Do I see any? Let's sort, I can't sort by color. There's no red, any duplicates? No, okay, great. Okay, so 114. The best way would be a pivot table. So let's insert a new pivot table, insert pivot. Do I have contiguous rows and columns? Everything's touching, yep. Let's rename this. No time to get lazy after all, it is an interview. You gotta show your best side and all of your data management skills and stay tidy. So the best way would be you take ID, put it in values, it shows you a sum. We don't want a sum, what do we want? We want a count and you get 114, okay? Bad, counting by hand, better, a formula, best, a pivot table, because you can make typos on formulas. You can probably still do some type of typo in a pivot table, but it's a little bit harder. There's more friction. Okay, question number two. At this rate, I'll be doing this for five million hours. How many participants do not live in the 20019 zip code? What would the bad way to do this be? The bad way would be, well, you, you eyeball it and you're like, well, this is not 20019 and maybe there's some more. I mean, they're mostly one nines, you know, and you'd say, oh, here's some. Another bad way would be you sort. Another bad way would be that you filter and you say, well, there's four people, one of whom is blank. Those are bad because as you have a huge data set, it takes too long to do that, or you make a typo, or it's not replicable. There's no work to show, to show your colleagues on the projects, like how you found your answer. There's no work to show your future self, how your past self did it. You can't like redo the same analysis every month quickly. It's gonna take the same amount of time every month. And in this particular agency, we had so many reports every single month. We had like dozens of reports to foundations and government donors every month. So. Doing things by hand is like, you'd be doing this all day. You'd be working on the weekends. Okay, that's bad by hand, better. I wonder what I would have done 10 years ago. I probably would have done a formula. I probably would have done, let me zoom in so you can see my awful formulas I'm about to do. I probably would have done something like this. Like I'd count A, 
and I'd say, okay, here's like everybody, right? 113. Actually, everybody is 114. So maybe I would have done something like count uh, if and count all the 20019s. Would I have done this? I probably would have done something like this the long way. And then I would have said, well, 114 minus this, and there's four. Eh. The better way, a pivot table, look how fast this is. We'll just take zip code here, and we've got one, two, three, four. Or you could filter it if it was like more complex than that, and you could say, okay, these are all the people who are not in 20019. There's four of them, just a simple drag and drop. That one's pretty quick. Number three, how many participants live in the Lotus Square neighborhood? The bad solution. You eyeball it, one, two, or you sort. You might sort A to Z, find all the Lotus Squares someplace down here, and you say there's 15 of them. Bad, you filter, and you say, well, there's, there's this many people. There's 14 or 15. See, who even knows? That's not gonna work, okay? We're not gonna sort and filter and eyeball. You're just gonna make a mistake. What I probably did 10 years ago, I loved formulas. I thought they were like awesome. I mean, they are awesome. Okay, I probably would have done this really, really quickly. Lotus square and we get 15. But the best way, guess what? It's a pivot table. It's so quick. Oh wait, am I still filtered? Hold on. Let me unfilter this before I move on. I don't want to accidentally leave out some of these people. Okay. Filter is off. What am I looking at? Neighborhood. Where's Lotus Square? 15. Wait a second. Is it 14 or is it 15? <laughs> wait, that said 15. And that said 15. Didn't I get a 14 earlier? What did I do to get a 14? I feel like I did a sort. Didn't I get a 14 earlier or did I mess that up? Just want to check. No, that says 15. Maybe I imagined a 14. Okay, I've checked three ways. The answer is 15 lotus squares. Question number four. There is a typo in one of the neighborhood data fields. What is the typo? Hmm, I guess bad would be you eyeball this, you, you just read down the list and you kind of say, where's the typo, where's the typo, where's the typo, where's the typo? And you, you hopefully find something, and that's like impossible in a big data set. Oh wait, is it that? Pairs dice. But if you have a real data set, like tens of thousands of entries, you're never gonna find it. Better would be how would you do this with a formula? I don't know. I don't know if there is a formula solution. Let's just do a pivot table. I think I would just do a pivot table just like this, neighborhood and ID number, and probably just eyeball the pivot table. So at least then you're not looking at all the entries. You're looking at the summarized entries. I don't know. This seems pretty easy. There's the typo. If you have a better way, let me know. How many participants have blank missing race ethnicity data? Okay, bad is eyeballing, sorting, filtering, any type of counting by hand. 10 years ago, I would have done a count blank, probably. I think I would have done a count blank on this whole column. And how many empties do we have? Four. And I probably would have sorted to verify that, just to make sure, because sometimes empties aren't really empties. One, two, three, four. Sometimes empties, it, when you download your data from some type of database or a website, sometimes they look empty, but they're not. There's a space in there. Look, I'm gonna touch the space key. And see how it looks blank and it like is, there's no actual race ethnicity data in there, but then your formula gets off. So, you know, I do usually like to check at least a couple of these just to make sure my numbers add up. Okay, 
So bad, doing something by hand, eyeballing it. Better, account blank formula. Best, the good old pivot table to the rescue. Uncheck neighborhood, check race ethnicity, blank, four. You know what, maybe the best is you do both. You solve it at least two ways to check your work. You kind of do a mix of eyeballing and formulas and pivot tables. That's probably the gold standard. Hmm. I'll have to think about that when I'm not so <laughs> trying to record this in one, one sitting. Okay, how many African Americans live in Kenilworth courts? Bad sorting, filtering, eyeballing, best, no, 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 better. You know what I probably would have done? I would have wanted to show off my count to ifs skills in the interview. So I would have done something like this. I would see out of all the race ethnicity data, how many say African American and out of all the neighborhoods, how many also say Kenilworth courts? Courts, plural? I guess so. I think it was Kenilworth courts. And then you get 23. And that's like reasonably quick to do if you know how to do a count ifs. But a pivot table is going to be better. Okay, I've already got race, ethnicity. Let's put neighborhood in there. Oof, that's too wide. Let's put neighborhood over here maybe. What neighborhood are we looking for? Kenilworth Courts, African American 23. Is that the answer I just got? 23, okay. At least we're gonna have right answers on this test. There is one participant that has eight children. What is their race ethnicity? Hmm, how do you solve that one? There's somebody with eight kids. What is their race ethnicity? You wanna know what my default instinct is? Oh, I see the eight right here. I probably sort it. I hope I didn't do this on the test. Sort it and then just say they're other. Mm. What would be the better way to do this? Could you do this with a formula? Like if the number of children variable uh, equals eight, then show me their race ethnicity, then count if they have, is this a formula that's gonna work? I don't think so. Where's the bottom of this column? Oops, too far. I don't think this works. No, because I'm not counting by anything. Am I counting the others? No, I only know it's the other because I just eyeballed it. I don't know if there's a formula for that. I know there's a pivot table for that. The pivot table would be, you could filter by number of children and say, just show me the person with eight kids. And what are we looking at? Race, ethnicity of them. And they are other. I don't know if there's a formula. Probably, there's probably a formula for that. How many participants are 18 years old? Do we have ages? No, ooh, it's getting a little juicy. We have to calculate this. Okay, let's insert a new column and let's find their age. And we will find it as of today. I'm recording this 131, 2020, Friday afternoon. And let's do, hmm, Let's do today gives us today's date. I'm gonna to try to walk you through this because this is something that um, is probably gonna be a little bit tricky. Okay, so today is <laughs> Excel stores dates funny. Okay, this is like Excel language. We are 43,861 days past January 1st, 1900, which is how Excel codes days which means that I can do like today minus a birth date. And that person is 9,564 days old divided by 
let's figure out years, divided by 365 days. Technically, there are leap years, so technically there are 365.25 days in a year. Is this person 26 as of today? Gosh, that's crazy. Those kids are old. They're grown-ups. Is this right? Let me eyeball some. Is somebody born in 79, almost 40? Would they turn 40 soon? Let me check. Oh my gosh. Am I turning 35 this year? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Age as of today. So now we need to find, what are we trying to find? 18? 18 or older? Or exactly 18? I think we want to find 18 or older. My instinct on this one is to do it the lazy way. Is this bad? Is anybody else having this instinct where I would just say, how many 18 year olds are there? There's four of them <laughs> and just call it a day. But I remember taking this Excel test. I remember thinking, what if this is like a high school math class or a college math class where the answer matters, but your process also matters. And it's like, you get bonus points for actually doing it the right way and showing your work. Probably, I remember um, like tr really trying to show my work on this interview test. Okay, so this is like, there's no work to show. That's, that's a bad sloppy way. At least I have a cool formula in here. Okay, how would I find out if they are 18 though? Could I do a, maybe I'll do a new column. So like if this is 18, then give me a yes. Otherwise give me a no. But I've got decimal places in here. Is it gonna capture these decimals? Nope. So let's go back in and round this. Ooh, this is gonna be a cute one. Look at this. Round this whole thing to zero decimal places, round it to the nearest whole number. Will that round the 18 year olds up or down? Hmm. Will they still count as 18 or will some of them be counted as 19? Still get four. No, no, no. There's five. No, now there's six. Hmm. Let's compare. Today minus F2. Let's take off the rounding. Let's do a quick comparison. Ages are so tricky. This is something that I used to have to calculate all the time and I don't nowadays. Okay, so the decimal place answer has these people and the rounded, yeah, it is round, okay. It's rounding, not, the, not how I want to. Like these people, do you see what it's happening? What's happening? That's not what I want. How would I do this as a formula? I'd have to do some type of like, if this answer is like less than 19, then, then also if, it's some type of nested if. Can't do that on a Friday. You know what the better answer is anyway? The better answer is a pivot table because then you don't have to deal with the formulas. Do you see how time consuming that is? Okay, I've added some new columns to my pivot table, which means I have to refresh to, oops, I left a blank column. Not a good thing to do. Okay, gotta have contiguous data. Let's refresh so that the columns I just made show up in my bank right here. That is not rounded. Gotta keep everything labeled nicely. It's so critical. You can't get sloppy. Otherwise, your future self has no idea what you did. I wish I had this test from 10 years ago. That would have been so cool. I doubt it was saved or it's on like some computer that doesn't exist anymore. Okay, let's see. Let's unfilter this for good measure. Just select everything again. And what are we looking at? Let's look at age as of today. 
and maybe filter. Can I filter this? No. Hmm. There's some faster way to do this with pivot tables. There must be. It's not coming to me now. I know as soon as I stop recording, I'm going to be thinking about this stupid question all afternoon and evening till I solve it. And I'll probably figure it out the second I stop record. So if I do, I'll do like a part two if or when I figure it out. I guess now I have to figure it out since I said that. Okay. Ugh. What's the answer again? Is it four or six people? I feel like this Excel test got harder. <laughs> okay, it's four people. Four people as of today when I'm doing it, January 31st. How many participants that are between the ages of 14 and 19 have four or more children? What? That is a long sentence there. Okay, between 14 and 19, including 14? Yeah, it must include 14-year-olds and 19-year-olds. Okay, and have four or more children. Let's just skip right to the pivot table. Let's keep this simple. Let's do, let's see, let's just filter my number of kids. My brain's getting tired. This is too much. What am I looking for? Four or more? I think four or more children. And it's one, one person. Ages 14 and 19. Is that right? Yeah, have four or more children, right? Four, five, six, eight. One person. How old is the participant that lives in Parkside that has only one child? That's a long sentence too. How old is the participant that lives in Parkside and has only one child? Let's skip right to the pivot table. Let's just filter as long as we're in here. Let's just look at one child and it might as well just filter by Parkside too. I'm doing what I told you not to do. How great is that? Okay. We'll see what answers you come up with. Parkside, one kid, Parkside, they are 33.8. They're not 34 yet, they're 33. Okay, that's that. I'm gonna go think about these answers and try to come up with some like sexier solutions, not just like some sorting and filtering and pivot tables towards the end. Um, I remember in real life, I did this really quickly. It was less than five minutes. And I remember the, the director, Isaac, was like, I'm just going to go get some coffee. Like, call me in 30 minutes when you're done, unless you finish early. And I remember finishing in a few minutes. And I was like, I think that's it. I just did some count ifs. Maybe I had some sum ifs in there someplace. I, this is like very, very close to the original test, though, that I took. And I went to get him and I was like, I think I'm done. And he was like, okay. And then I got the job, which is pretty cool. I know that the test was a big part of the interview process to make sure I could like stand on my own two feet. Um, so even if I didn't do it like perfectly, I did it pretty good. I wasn't counting by hand. So this is your chance. Comment, let me know. What solutions did you use? How did you approach this? How long did it take you? I can see my timers on like a million hours to do this. However, I was talking to you as I did it. So I like to think that in real life, if I was just doing it really quickly, if it was like a testing scenario, I could do it faster than this. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll try to get on Monday morning or Monday afternoon or something with like a fresh brain. Okay. I look forward to hearing to you from you. <laughs> Bye.